my name is Marissa Rader, and I am curious what you think is the most important part of your day. You probably guessed that it's the morning, which you're partly right, but you'll have to stay to the end of the video to find out what else. So let's get back to mornings, though. Many people go about them wrong. I'm just going to say it. So let me ask you again. Are you tired of feeling sluggish every morning? Do you feel like you can't get anything done because your routine starts off on the wrong foot? Past me would have said yes to all of those questions. I honestly thought I was destined to never be a morning person, but I am happy to report to you that I was so wrong. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you how to fix a bad morning routine. You are going to learn four tips that will help set you up for success and have you feeling great all day long. So good mornings start with good decisions, and that's why we're here today. When it comes to waking up in the morning, there are a lot of different factors that play into how well you'll feel when you get out of bed, from what time you wake up to what time you go to sleep at night. But I have four things that are sure to help you start your day off right. And the first one is to wake up earlier than you have to. That's no one's favorite sentence. <laughs> no one's. Okay, there might be a few early birds in the crowd here that, you know, really do enjoy waking up earlier than they have to. Or maybe you have no real set time to be up. So you just, you know, wake up when you want. That's, an, that's for a different story. But Waking up earlier than you have to doesn't mean that you have to be up at 5 a.m. and get half of your day done before you go to work. That's not what I mean. But waking up earlier than you have to will set you up for success because you're going to be less rushed. You're going to be able to take some time for yourself and you're going to be able to do these other things that I'm going to give you inside this video. So the key here, though, is to set your alarm for even 15 or 20 minutes earlier than you have to. And you don't have to make that jump all at once. If you struggle to get up in the morning, start with setting your alarm five minutes before. And then once you get used to that, then back it up another five minutes. It doesn't have to be an all or nothing kind of thing. And I'm preaching to the choir here when I say that because I'm an all or nothing kind of person. I'm working on it. My second tip is take some time for yourself before starting your day. So take a minute to read, to dive into scripture, to work out, to do a full skincare and hair routine that's going to make you feel great for the day instead of just throwing it up in a messy bun, walking out the door and rushing to get to work. If you wake up a little earlier, and you take time for yourself, you make sure you're prepared, you will have a whole different inner body experience, a feeling of calm and productivity to start your day off with. So you're not going to be rushing out the door, grabbing things as you go, because you're going to be prepared. My third tip is avoid checking your email or social media first thing in the morning. It doesn't do anybody any good. What that does is that tells yourself that you're allowing other people and other things to run your day. You're the boss of your day and you choose how you run it. Yeah, I know you have jobs and your boss tells you what you need to do each day. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the things you can control, which is your emotions, your decisions, your actions. By not checking your email and your social media first thing in the morning, you remain in control of all of those things for as long as possible. It conserves your mental bandwidth and makes your day run smoother that much longer because you only get so much bandwidth in a day and then it's gone. And if you use it all up by noon, it's going to be a rough rest of the day. So wake up a little earlier. Take some time for yourself to get going in the morning. Avoid checking your email or social media. And tip number four is what I referred to, referred to earlier, and that's create a solid nightly routine. I was the queen of thinking I could go to bed at midnight. I could lay awake for an hour and a half before I fell asleep and wondered why I wasn't getting out of bed in the morning. And I was hitting snooze three times and then rushing out the door. Once I created a solid nightly routine that taught my body that it is now time to rest, it is time to go to sleep, it's time for it to rejuvenate, then my mornings 
got that much easier. It's not going to be a fix all, but it is going to be a solid part of your morning routine by creating a nightly routine to partner with it. So be sure to check back in and subscribe so that you don't miss my next video that's going to break down exactly how to build a solid nightly routine.